Welcome to Meet the Artist at Frame Thrower. My name is Ben Kusold, and in this episode, I'll be speaking with Jack Preston. Besides being an extremely gifted animator, Jack is also a very versatile one, always tinkering with new and alternate ways of animating. Jack has worked on some of the biggest projects out there, including Venom, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Ghostbusters Afterlife, Dune, and many, many more. He's also a very good friend of mine. I really enjoyed talking with him so much, actually, that we had to edit this down quite a bit. So any sharp cuts to what's the end, especially, now you know why. Also, if you're an animator looking for feedback from other animators, come check out framethrower.io. Customized feedback tools, great vibes, and great artists, all at framethrower.io. Come check it out. And now, Here's Jack Preston. And we have like what well, we have like two and a half listener anyway, so it's this this is yeah. this is great. Maybe with you we'll get to five. Yeah. You know, it's the the, the prospect that anyone will actually watch this. <laughs> like my friend. Johnny was was texting me today saying that I'm going to watch it, and I'm like, that's when I realised that people might actually watch this. Yeah, but it's same with animation as well. I never presume it's going to make it into the film ever. I'm like, they're not going to use this. I mean, this is not going to. I mean, you're going to use this. You're going to put this in the film. Are you serious? Like, it's the same thing. It's like a survival mechanism, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Do you do? <laughs> Do you have that feeling when you get a shot approved that no, you Probably. don't need that? <laughs> I mean, that's not something beyond me. No, it's not going in the film. <laughs> well, always, always. And even yeah. though you know it definitely is, there's still like a, yeah, but it's not going to like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had a few of those where it's like, I, I, it's going to come back. I just tell myself, it's going to come back. That's going to be fixes. And then, then we'll figure it out yeah. in the fixes. Yeah. Yeah, it's never finished. It's abandoned, isn't it? Yeah. Although then sometimes you have those where it's like you spent a long time on it and then they cover it up in smoke or explosions or... Yeah, definitely. <laughs> That's so weird when you see a shot that you've worked on in a film. You're watching the film and you like just completely watching it objectively. And then my shot comes on and then for a second everything goes... That the film goes back to normal and it's like something yeah, yeah, yeah. right some memory comes up out of the subconscious <laughs> and then you're back in the film again it's so yeah, weird. yeah 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 i don't know if a lot of people have that feeling as well but yeah it's just it's a weird thing to see something that you worked on in context of all the other stuff yeah i think yeah. It's, it's also sometimes I forget how big the machinery is and, and how many yeah. people, because when you're working on it, you're just part of a small team working on it. And then, but it's the same with lighting and compositing and the people before you yeah. as well. So yeah. 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 We started then. <laughs> we, yeah, I think this is good. I think you yeah. got us there. Um, I wanted to hear about studying in Manchester. Yeah. So um, I didn't um, get into really studying animation or art for a long time because I was kind of derailed into doing music technology for a long time from about the age of 18. Really? Uh, yeah. I, I used to do animation as a kid, uh, just like flip books, and I was always into drawing and illustration yeah. and that kind of stuff. All my um, old books like Macbeth or To Kill a Mockingbird in the bottom corner they've all got little flip books in them ah oh, nice and, uh, I used to uh, animate stuff in um, deluxe paint on the Amiga <laughs> and um, something happened when I got to around the age of 15 and I just decided I wanted to do uh, music mm. so I kind of did that and then studied music technology didn't do anything to do with animation till I was probably around 23 or 24 and then went and did a course at Manchester Met uh, which was what? an art course. And was that a bachelor's degree or? 
I was a Bachelor of Arts, yeah. Mm. And uh, the course that I did was not even an animation course, really. It was more of a, um, more of a contemporary arts. Oh. And it was great because they just let you do whatever you wanted for three years. So I just used Maya the whole time. Nice. Yeah. So you... I'm kind of glad I didn't do the animation course and the illustration course because it feels like really um, put you in a um, in a box, you know. Yeah. There, I think maybe we'll get to that later because you do a lot of things besides work that is animation related, and yeah. and it seems like you have a flair for, or it it's it seems like it comes natural to you to just try out different uh, software and 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 uh, it, it techniques. And I just see something, and when it looks so good, you can't help yourself, and you have to kind of getting the results that you've seen in a little demo or something it just kind of you can't yeah can't, can't help it you know do you think that was fostered by those like that was kind of encouraged by those years in in manchester or? um yeah definitely like when i first used maya i lived with i was in a house share with a friend who worked at a games company and he showed me how to use it and i just remember it was like but my imagination was just kicked open. And, yeah. um, I just couldn't get enough of it. <laughs> uh, and I was just working in a post office, uh, sorry, the post room of an office at the time. Oh, okay. And I just wanted to get home just to get onto the computer. Oh, and, so, uh, so yeah. that's, that's what got you into it. It wasn't like a, yeah, it was, it was just seeing someone else. Yeah. To be yeah. able to, I mean, and that was a little bit like I went back around into doing what I kind of should have been doing all those years because, you know, I used to do uh, animation on the computer from the age of like 13, 14, mm. completely self-taught because there was no internet. Um, and I remember at the time I used to do things like I had no idea what I was doing and I would draw something or do a little animation and I didn't even know how to save it to disk. <laughs> So I just used to leave the computer on all day, <laughs> show it to my parents, and then just turn it off. Whoa. Because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know how to save the disc. I was 13. Um, that's um, the, that's beautiful, though. That's kind of like the Buddhist monk, you know, like they do, <laughs> they do the whole piece, and then they, they yeah. in the sand or whatever, and they wipe it clean. It was like, that was preparing me for, uh, for work. <laughs> yeah, it was. Do it, it's gone. Do it, it's gone. Do it, it's gone. But, yeah, um, yeah, and then um, I got onto the course, and uh, that was it. Then that was just three years of doing whatever I liked. It was mm. incredible. So, it was incredible. did it, did you did did you feel prepared for uh, because you started in a generalist role afterwards, right? Well, I luckily some people that had been on the course that started a very small company in Manchester. Oh. two or three of them and so i kind of was doing a kind of work experience semi work in there and uh yeah that was kind of mostly animation but it was generalist stuff because nice. they just did jobs that came in and you have to do whatever mm. what kind of jobs was it oh god it was everything from like architectural stuff sometimes it wasn't animation but they, they were working on their own project at the time they're trying oh, to get yes. funding to uh do a little animation it was based on a comic character uh so there was lots of that going on uh but yeah architectural stuff as well yeah yeah, yeah. yeah so you you just how many were you that company was um there was there was the two guys that owned the company and ran the company one of them had done the course that i did okay and then there was two other people that work there full time for and then there's me and a guy called tom so there's six but i mean me and tom were barely uh full time but that that company was like this big mm. and people that have worked there have gone on to work at pixar weta um uh, uh, oh god what are called Ardman animation mm. and uh yeah, they've all gone on to like greater things. I'm the underachiever of all those people. They've all gone on <laughs> to like amazing stuff. Well, yeah. I, I think you're selling yourself a bit short, but yeah. Thanks. 
<laughs> but did you did you did you ever receive funding for uh, any of those uh, in house projects or a little bit of funding, but they kind of never went anywhere. They got mm. um, it was um, it was based on a comic book character. It was a, uh, a I think the character was a guy who just got out of prison, and it was a little bit like Have you heard of the? Are you familiar with a comic called Viz? Viz. It's, uh, it's an English comic book. But uh, it looks like the so. Dandy and the Beano, but it's got very like coarse, crass humor in it. It was a little bit like that. Okay. So uh, they were trying to get funding from, I don't know, drug counseling companies to, to oh. try and make it, you know, some kind of a uh, like a learning you know, tool or, or kind yeah. of yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah. it never really got finished. Mm. And they just got dribs and drabs grants to try and finish that off, but it didn't really get completed in the end. But um, no, it was great to work on. Yeah. So, so when jobs came in, did you just kind of like, I'll I'll do that, and someone else, you just kind of divided it, and and then yeah. you had to just be a jack of all trades. So. Yeah, yeah. So I was there basically whilst I was doing the course, not as an employee. I would mm. wait until a job came in, and then would hire me for a few days. So. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Was good, yeah. Yeah. It was tiny. And then did you, because the after, not, uh, so what made you pursue animation particularly after that? Was it was like just thinking back on the old flip books and, or, or was that just something that happened after? I suppose that's just the thing that appealed to me the most. Mm. Is, you know, the storytelling, I suppose. Yeah, I just uh, gravitated. And I, I, th I think to do about being a gen about being a journalist was that um, there's a lot less free rigs and uh, you kind of had to make a lot of your own things. Yeah. You would have to make your own character or make your own environment. Uh, so you kind of had to do a little bit of that, I suppose, back then. That would have been about 2003, 2002. Mm. Yeah, that's early. Yeah. 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 And then wh what came after that? I, I had a list around here. I tried to memorize it, but I didn't get there. <laughs> you know, I, I wrote a list as well. And uh, oh, I you did? planned out and uh, I don't know why it's gone. <laughs> I'm sure I saved it, but it's gone. It's disappeared. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I got a job working at um, another studio in Manchester on a TV show nice. called Head Cases, which was like, uh, these are all kind of British English references. There was a TV show called Spitted Image, which was uh, puppets that were like caricatures of celebrities and political figures, and it was like a really popular show. And uh, it, it, they stopped making it. It was, it was puppetry. Mm. And, um, this show was meant to be like the animated version of this. Ah, uh, I see. Okay. Typical, like loved puppetry show that was on a Sunday night. Um, and uh, that sounds that pretty was, cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I had a great experience working on it, but I remember the first episode because, you know, you never get to see the thing in its entirety. Uh, and I sat down and watched it with my mother on a Sunday night and it just wasn't funny. Uh, it just wasn't funny. Yeah. But I've, it was a great experience. Yeah. You know, I really enjoyed the working there, but it wasn't a great show. No. Well, they, I feel like they've, they've it's been a few of those where they they do like a new 3D version of something that's like yeah. older and beloved and the the charm and is it, it I don't it has nothing to do with the 3D it's just a it's just a rewriting and redoing of it I guess I yeah think. it's maybe just something it is, about the puppets know. that was just they had like charm to them yeah and maybe it's that as well. yeah it looked incredible. I wanted to do a tour of the office, by the way. Yeah, please do. Because whenever I do a Zoom chat, okay. there's always this, like, you can see, like, there's pipes and you've got the boiler around here. Oh, it right. Horrible, but... It does have a six dungeon-y look to it. Oh, right, see. <laughs> see, this is, like, it's all, all nice and decked out. That is I've beautiful. Got I've got some, like, I like... Stuff there. Uh, oh, that's amazing. 
I, no, no one gets to see any of this on the Zoom chats. No, you, yeah. Oh, that was a bit too far. <laughs> it, yeah. it is true. It's, you should have flipped it. That whole, we're missing the Twin peaks -y feel on yeah. the other side. Well, there's a, there's a giant mirror in the bathroom and I brought it through, but it wasn't big enough. Uh, so um, I used the hand mirror. Anyway, let's talk about well, Nemo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, I, did you? So after the puppet show, did you stay at the same company, or? Um, I went to work at a company in Sheffield straight after that, which did um, they do a four D uh, attractions, uh, little animations which are in three D. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Then you get things like you spray water at you and stuff like that. And uh, I worked at that place for nearly a year. Worked on. Um, a ride the Beatles Museum in Liverpool. Oh. Yeah. And that was another great place to work because um, you had lots of input on the idea. They did all the animation in Soft Damage, which is in 3D. Mm. And it was like, you know, you'd animate an octopus going to tickle someone's legs. And then <laughs> on the ride, there'd be some pipes that came out of the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They had smells and it was all in 3D and all this stuff. So I worked with those guys after that. And then I went back to that studio, Red Vision, uh, mm. where we did um, the head cases show and just worked on some TV stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then um, I know you took a you 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 went to Lisbon as well, right? Yeah, yeah. A little working holiday for um, about a month in Lisbon. Oh, oh okay. And these are all just, all of these jobs are just, uh, you know, you had a friend who was going somewhere that needed mm. someone and they were all like last minute things. And that's like so many jobs just come out of nowhere or opportunities yeah. just because like that, because th th that was the guy that I sat next to. He's mm. in Lisbon now. And I said, we need someone to come over. And I went over and worked on this commercial for um, it was a Portuguese power line company. And uh, they, 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 they animated these birds that live in the power lines. And um, you had to do all this lip sync in Portuguese, which is actually a lot easier when you don't speak the language because you don't think about the words. You yeah. just concentrate on the sounds. I could, um, yeah, I could imagine that, yeah. Yeah, it's you don't, you don't do this with the words because you don't speak the language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, that was a great experience. Huh. It was, it was almost like a holiday, to be honest. Well, it wasn't a very demanding job, or? They were incredibly laid back. They didn't come <laughs> into the office till about 11 or 12. And if uh. I tried to stay late and work, they, they, they'd make me go home. <laughs> um, yeah, it was great. It sounds slightly different from the uh, UK, or at least London, London work culture. Yeah, but you know, when I worked in London, um, I was never really asked to do uh, unpaid overtime. No. If I ever did that, that was off my own back. And um, yeah, I've, 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 my experience of doing overtime is lots of times people say go home. Mm. I've never felt pressure to uh, oh, that's nice. do lots of overtime. I've just been lucky, I suppose. Yeah, I think... I th it's a tricky one because I've definitely been on shows where um, the 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 culture is that you would stay at times, but yeah. but if you asked, then anyone uh, would tell you to go home, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's one of those funny things, but at that time I was so hungry and. You know, you just yeah. want to, you just want to learn and 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 improve yeah. yourself, and and then you get a free meal, and you can go to the pub afterwards. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I was similar. Um, I think I definitely, I definitely went through a phase of being a workaholic. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe that's why they were, were not pressuring me. <laughs> I was just probably doing it without even realizing it. Yeah. So. I know you also had uh, uh, some time in in Russia where you did. Uh, was it? <laughs> I was. I've been. I've been working on some different segways, and I totally blew it. I was gonna ask when you work for the Russians and stuff, but now I just yeah fumbled I, um, my way into it. 
that was just another one. This is, um, I've worked at uh, that studio, uh, Access in Glasgow, worked there for about three years, and that was like a permalance job, so there was always dry patches. Mm. And I just had a friend who had got this um, remote job working for a Russian company doing an animated film, and I worked on that for a few months, met another guy who went to a different studio, and then I worked for those guys for about three years remotely mm. on a, an animated film about a dragon. Um, <laughs> it's just, you know, you just these opportunities and this like it's all like circuitous how you find, find these jobs and like how am I the only I was like the only employee that, that wasn't in or from the Russian Federation and I remember thinking how did I, how did I get here <laughs> and I was constantly like they're gonna they're gonna just forget about me I felt like I was a, a, an outpost or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I've known them for three years, and they were, um, they were great. Yeah. What they were What great. was the so? The, the, was it that was the that was the feature that? Uh, how long did that take? I worked on that for about three years. Oh, um, really? Wow. Took for, well, it's probably more like two years. There's other things in between. It was just a project that hmm. took forever to do, and it was that was all animated in Houdini. Um, Houdini. Yeah, there's these whole chapters of my life I forget about. <laughs> that, that was, this is great. <laughs> that was like professionally animating using Houdini for about three years. Huh. Yeah, I, I, I I, yeah, I haven't even opened uh, Houdini. I wouldn't know. I mean, once you're inside and just animating, it's not that different from my the, the, the graph editor is similar. Okay. Um, and all that stuff. So once you're inside using using it, it's not it's not that different really. But um, when you try and do something a little different, like mm. oh I don't know, make a cube, <laughs> constrain something, you're like, I... oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can imagine. Like, I, yeah, I, I'm working in Motion Builder myself, and uh, yeah. f for now. And uh, even though that's also, it's very closely related to Maya, it's, it doesn't feel like it. Yep. It's like the, yeah. Yeah, that was another job that I had for, worked at a game studio for four hours because uh, they wanted me to use Motion Builder and I told them that I couldn't use Motion Builder. So I go to get the job. This is, this is when I was in a dry patch. Met this, uh, recruiter online and like we'll, we'll get you a job this is when i was i'd moved to london and I was, we'll get you a job in guildford and i, get, I got a job at this uh, games company and um i was using motion builder and maya and then you would upload your work to the um development kit to test it out and mm -hmm. i remember sitting there and i'm like no i'm going to really stick at this and give it a go and I remember there was a certain point where I just stopped listening to what people were saying because I decided that I didn't want this job. And I remember kind of getting tunnel vision and people were talking to me and they were just like... <laughs> and I was like... I said, right. I, need to, I need to just talk to you in the office. So that I've, I've made a mistake. I don't want to work here. Oh. And I'm like, really? I was like, yeah. Yeah, I think I shouldn't. I think I shouldn't have taken this job. And then um, left, and it was yeah. I'm glad I didn't stay there because mm. it was just it would have been a complete time waste. Wouldn't have been happy, so I just I just left. Yeah. Well, you know, the Russians took me back. <laughs> yeah, it's like I couldn't find that one on your uh, on your LinkedIn. <laughs> I don't think four hours comes to four hours, a LinkedIn no. entry, does it? That's a bit short. Yeah. <laughs> so and I remember the recruiter a month later offered me another job. <laughs> like, Did you not you've got see? Got very short memory. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> this is great. We're like with like uh. We're 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 good we're good friends, but I I there's so many things that I didn't know at all <laughs> that's coming up here. I've done a lot of weird jobs, yeah. Yeah, um, I think those days are past now. 
Yeah, because <laughs> eventually <laughs> you started a Dean Egg in London, right? Yeah, um, and I've been there for five years now. It's been like for five years. And yeah, really like it here. Yeah. <laughs> No, uh, I mean no. No, 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 no. I, I, <laughs> I, I was, I was, I was laughing at your, at your, at your comfort. You like there was this. Um, no, I agree. And uh, I, I. You worked there for a long time, didn't you? I was there you for. Uh, I started in twenty. I started as an intern in late twenty ten, and. Was that the giant John Carter influx? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was, that was, that was quite the awakening. Like because I th I was kind of waiting for them to give me some cool shots, and then you see people who can really animate when you just came out of school, and it's just yeah, it's yeah, uh it's a different true. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I was there till in London till 2015, and then in uh, in Vancouver it's till. 2017 took a long break and then came back a few times uh and and yeah and then it's been a year now i think since since last yeah yeah i feel like i was i was kind of you know like uh, the pirates of the caribbean the, the the guy who lives in the walls kind of thing after a while i started to feel like Kill me! <laughs> yeah. i mean no i mean it's great to be here yeah <laughs> well to be at very honest Robin Luckham and Aaron Gilman they they built an amazing department that yeah, way we yeah, I, where guys. everyone feels sheltered and and taken care of and and of course some projects are more fun than others but it was and the the, the animation team was always incredible especially yeah. in the later years uh in Vancouver uh yeah it's like you walk into a big living room when you when you come in there so and then yeah yeah it's, yeah, it's a the, really good group yeah that's something that a lot of people say like the new starters say that they really like the atmosphere and they really like the people there and it's like yeah, yeah. i'm <laughs> one of those people not yeah. that it's a compliment to me obviously but it's just nice when people say that. it's also yeah 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 i'm thinking things about me yeah but this show is about you so this is a whole <laughs> yeah why are we talking about you yeah i don't know i i I got carried off. That was a, that was a right, bad so, manner. Yeah, I'm still yeah. figuring this out. See, that, now I'm talking about myself again. Is, are you going to use this? You're not going to use it, are you? No, no. <laughs> I have to. Um, I have to. This is like, otherwise I'm going to be content. one behind. You have to put one out every week. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise the, 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 the five subscribers are going to forget about us. So... <laughs> It's I a should, tough, tough I industry. Subscribe to that channel, really, shouldn't I? Yeah, I should as well, actually. So, <laughs> uh, well, um, I wonder well, how much we can talk about Dinek before uh, it's not okay. Um, so you just stop me, right? When I <laughs> because I'm not there anymore. I mean, you anymore. can say whatever you want. You don't worry about it anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, I wanted to talk about because we worked on a recent project that was that was a fun one, and yeah. um, I had a great time. Yeah, yeah, I did too. Uh, a lot of people didn't, though. I don't think. No, I think it was. No. Well, it was also a very demanding show, right? Um, yeah, I suppose it was. Yeah, it was. there was a lot of uh, change of direction and stuff, but. Um, Anyway, I, I think we can talk about it without revealing too much because uh, one of the th fun things at DNIC that I got to try a few times as well was to be in the motion capture suit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. on this project, uh, you were quite the star of the whole, the whole uh, because we, we all had to animate these characters and, and uh, you're, every time we put some animation on them, it was just you walking around in my in my Maya scene. <laughs> so Aaron, Aaron, like, too. Like Aaron, <laughs> Aaron was better at the motion capture, I think. But um, yeah, it was. Um, I'd not, I'd, I hadn't really done much of that stuff at all, but I really enjoyed it, uh, and it was. 
I don't do much exercise, and that was like a good workout. <laughs> so I got that endorphin rush that you get from when you go on a, like a, a run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'd come out of the motion capture studio and just feel incredible. Yeah, yeah. Been on a run, basically. Yeah, I remember we. Uh, I sat next to you, and uh, you came back, and you looked like you just yeah, the, you just had a great I'm time. A cushion of air. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> My yeah. favorite time in, uh, in uh, working with that animation was that because you had to do a lot of falling, so the getting yeah. up, when the character that you played had to get up afterwards, I would just uh, scrub through that. It was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> you know what I love about motion capture as well is when they've finished whatever it is that they're doing. Yeah. And then they're talking to the person. <laughs> yeah, and exactly. still in the motion capture. And they're like... <laughs> yeah, you go. Yeah. Yeah, right. and it's, it's so great when you see a character that's not built for that. So yeah, you have uh, like an orc or some kind of scary wizardy thingy, and it's just yeah. doing like these little gestures. Like, was that too much? <laughs> yeah. <Was> that... <laughs> oh, okay. Right. Oh, that's the I'll best. I'll tone it down next time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's just yeah, yeah, it was good. Enjoyed it. Do you think you're going to do more? Uh, no, we're all working for more. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Someone somewhere well. has the suit, though. But they, they, they have done it, actually. The last project that I worked on, the um, anim supervisor directed the motion capture remotely via Zoom. So oh. um, it's, it's, it's there. You know, you, you can go in the studio and do it if you want to. But, um, no, no immediate plans for that. Mm. No. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it, it seemed to be one where there, there was a lot needed also in a, sh in, in a short time. So, yeah. Yeah. But I, I like that when you have to come up with lots of ideas. Mm. And it's yeah. just all probably going to go in the bin. Yeah. It's yeah, very but... freeing. It's just like next, bit, next, 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 yeah. next. It's it's just like when you're uh, with your Amiga. It's like the old days. It's like my tender years all over again. Yeah, yeah. So, what? Uh, uh, do you feel like it sparked something else, like some kind of like beside work, or d did it inspire you in any way? Doing all this, uh, um... I was I was very lucky that I feel like that when I had to do a lot of extra work and a lot of stuff for that, I'd already kind of. Um, become interested in just doing lots more work at home. Mm. I kind of went through a creative burst and it's, I think it's just because of uh, technology, you know, certain mm. things were just able, was able to do them. I've got into uh, finding things online, models and things and, you know, kit bashing things. Mm. And I remember I got into using Arnold at the time because it, be it came free with Maya. And um, it was the first time I felt like I was able to really make nice looking stuff. Yeah. And I turned 40 as well. I don't know if that's something to do with it as well. You... But yeah, a lot of things kind of happened around that time. And uh, yeah, it was a good time. And we started working from home as well. Yeah. It means that you just more, you know, you can manage your time yeah better work life and you became of. a dad too do you think turning 40 did, yeah, yeah yeah I'm a dad becoming now, a, yeah. yeah yeah congrats again yeah. how how is she Thank doing you. yeah she's great she's just started to stand up she just started to crawl forward and now she's already starting to stand up she's like she's taking a she skipped a stage oh yeah and, uh, oh god it's terrifying <laughs> She just keeps falling over now. <laughs> yeah. Banging her head and stuff. Oh. But, um, yeah, she's great. She's really healthy. She's massive. Mm. It's great, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we miss her, Chelsea and I. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She always asks about you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's her first words. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, do you bands. think. Yeah. Oh, she's so cute. Uh, yeah. Do you think, though, that with the, the, having her and like you said you you said turning 40 is do you, I, because i recognize the, the 
approaching 40 as well that it's like there's like a need for something new maybe that's why i'm doing this but do yeah. you do you feel some of that or uh maybe i don't know it's hard to say um it's hard to think about it objectively but um yeah one thing i will say is having less time is definitely making me do a lot more <laughs> because when you've got a kid you might get an hour to yourself and that hour that you have to yourself is you do something yeah yeah, you know, yeah. there's no Oh, I'll make a coffee and like just choose a which podcast do I want today? Which podcast will suit? <laughs> yeah, there's none of that now. No. When I go on the computer, I just like work now, and that's that's a weird thing. That the the less time you have, the more productive you become. Yeah, yeah. I've definitely noticed that. Hmm. When I think about what I used to be like, I don't know what I did all day. <laughs> I don't know what I did. I think. I think weekends was just being home over and eating McDonald's. Yeah. I think that's all, <laughs> that's all I did. <laughs> all that time wasted. But I'm asking because you've done, you've done so many, uh, cool personal projects that yeah. are, that are, I'll probably be cutting in at this time so that people can see. And, and mm -hmm. the, I know you also, um, playing with Unreal. Yeah. Yeah. How are you finding that? it's like oh god it's like <laughs> it's like oh god it's like ecstatic highs and like crushing lows mm. because it's I mean, i'm using five which i think is a little unstable and uh there's also just the fact that you don't really know what you're doing because i'm kind of teaching myself but uh when it works it's it's just incredible it's it's yeah. brilliant yeah it's yeah. like when you have your editing software uh except you can go into the footage you know and change the footage kind of like on the fly uh, it's amazing yeah this is kind of getting all the little things to work because i'm still doing the animation in maya and bringing it into unreal so there's still like little kinks um yeah yeah it's great though if you can get it working <laughs> yeah it looks amazing it almost yeah. makes me want to try it and i'm i i I'm, yeah i'm not sure it would go well if i did it I feel yeah it looks tricky i've been trying to have a clear idea of what i want before i start to do it as opposed to you know you just try and learn something i'm yeah. only trying to learn the specifics to the things that i'm to the thing that i'm working on mm. uh so i've been doing it that way as opposed to just diving in without an idea and i find that that helps um it's helped me anyway yeah no I, I i get that i feel like it's it's uh having a specific goal as solving a yeah. task is always a good way of learning yeah uh, yeah, definitely. yeah yeah stops you from drifting and not finishing things yeah exactly yeah are you are you um is this is that are you these personal projects do you I don't know if you've thought about it, but do do you see them as a as a as a necessary outlet next to work? Uh, because work is the, the nature of the work that we do is that it's limited. Like you you get to be they call you an artist, but you're uh, a creative. Person, really? Yeah, yeah. I see, I see myself as like a craftsperson at work. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're doing a not. That's not a. No, that's not a, a, a criticism or anything it's just no no you're told what to do yeah and you have to deliver that in a specific way so that's a craft to me yeah yeah but, um, but the, there's still room for uh art, some art but i guess i think what's missing is the visionary component that it's it's quite mm -hmm. limited what did you well, it's great when you work on a project when things go wrong because then <laughs> they want you to give ideas yeah, yeah. That's when yeah. you know something's going wrong is that they ask you to have some input. But <laughs> <laughs> so that's okay. You know, yeah. Like yeah. Opportunities as, as, as they arise. Yeah. Yeah. No, but I think that's a good thing to keep in mind that it, it, it that's the nature of the job because I don't think you'll find any job in the industry that's going to, uh, that's going to provide what a, what what tinkering at home with your amiga will give you i mean you can just do anything you want yeah and no job can really 
if you know. Like no one will. Oh, it's it's a grant. Just go do what you want. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, doesn't, that doesn't exist. But, but um, yeah, I just love to do stuff at home, and it's not even like um, you need a drive to do it. And help it. I love to mm. do it. And I enjoy doing it. So it's not even like you're trying to find the time. You make the time because you're enjoying what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. That's um, that's important, I suppose. Oh yes, it's very important. Um, what would you pass on, Jack? What would you? What if Ruby came to you and wanted to be an animator? What would you tell her besides "Don't do it" and "Please don't do it"? And then she keeps saying yes, and then you know, okay, whatever. Then what are you gonna say? I mean, I don't really like giving advice to people, but I would just say um, you got to teach yourself. That's the only way, and the only way to get good at doing it is to just keep doing it. Mm. And um, there's no secret. And that's it. There is no secret. You just, you just do it and keep doing it. Yeah. You know. That, that's it. That's it. I mean, what would you say? What I don't know. Say? I don't know. I'm not. I. Well, I. Uh, um. I would say maybe do no. like one course, but if it's a short course, you know, like animation mentor is like yeah. a whole year. I would rather do courses. I think you should do courses where they're little bite-sized things. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go to university to study it because you can just do so much at home online and be self-taught. But that's yeah. me. I mean, I like being teaching yourself yeah, things, yeah, you know, yeah. but that's just, maybe that's a personal thing. I, yeah, I, it makes sense because there's a lot of a lot of material is 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 available for free and and yeah. I think what 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 you could get a little bit lost if without is is some kind of mentor or some sort of if there's something yeah there's any websites you can think of where they could maybe go for that kind of <laughs> well feedback would be great and uh, yeah yeah. Jack is available for feedback all hours of the day at framethrower.io. He'll he'll just he'll yeah. Jack will give you amazing feedback. I'm speaking to the cam to the people <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I, I but I think you're right. I think I think uh, putting in the hours is is that's how it starts. No, I mean I know that that's not. That's a very vague, non-specific bit of advice, but um, there's just so much available online now, and you can just do it. And yeah, rigs and software and yeah, tutorials. Well, thank you so much for doing this, Jack. Yeah, yeah. no worries. It was a pleasure. Yeah, nice to talk to you. You, you as well. And um, yeah. Jack is also at framefero.io where he'll be giving you great feedback on all your shots. So <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Bye bye.